Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective, and today we have another ThinkPad. Now, this one has definitely seen some battle damage, as you can see from the top lid, but it is no less in functional condition, which is exactly what we would expect from a ThinkPad. This ThinkPad is the T420S. So the S series is unique across all ThinkPads because it is the slimmer variant of a standard model. So the T420 would be the standard model of this device here. And they've been producing the S series uh, since the IBM days, and modern versions of this are still being produced. Now, one thing I want to point out is that the S series gets some of its DNA from a very important and classic computer, and that is actually the X300 and the X301. Now, on the surface, there might not be uh, any immediate uh, similarities between the two, but if you take a look at how these two machines are designed, especially when it comes uh, to how their ports are laid out, you will start to see just a couple of similarities on the design, especially when we move around here uh, to the back of these two units. We can definitely see some design language and some similarities, and that also continues on the bottom of these two machines as well. We can see that the uh, battery style is very reminiscent of one another as well as the location of the panel. The T-Series of course does have uh, some docking which is quite convenient. If you want to learn more about the X300 which is probably one of the most important laptops that ever graced the ThinkPad line, I'm going to leave the link over here to the series project Kodachi where I spent some time with David Hill talking about the creation of this product which really launched the S series down the road, but it also launched the X1, and then of course the X1 Carbon, which is still with us today. Highly recommend you check it out, very important machine. So jumping back over to this fellow, it was released in February of 2011 and was produced until February of 2013. Now, one of the key differences between the T410S, which was its predecessor, is of course the T410S uh, had a 16 by 10, and of course this screen is 16 by 9, which would become kind of the standard up until recently when we switched back to 16 by 10. The other thing that's worth pointing out is that the T410S actually has a USB 3.0 port, and that's kind of unique because if you wanted that on other models of that era, like say the X220, you had to get the i7 CPU. So it's really nice to see that that came as standard. There were a few other things, of course, like CPU and GPU refreshes, but for our purposes, we're just going to gloss over that for the time being. Opening this back up, let's go ahead and talk about some specs. So we are rocking a 14-inch panel standard on the T4 series, and it is either a 1366 by 768 or a 1600 by 900 panel. And that 1600 by 900 panel is 230 nits, and a 300 to 1 contrast ratio, which, you know, is not that great, but panel technology then is not what it is today. CPUs were either an i3, two i5s, and two i7s, and these are all second gen, and I'll list them up here on the screen for you. And maximum RAM is 16 gigabytes of DDR3, 1333 megahertz, PC3, 10600. These machines were 3G capable, um, if you're not looking to use cellular data though, you can swap out that card or occupy it with an mSATA drive, so you can have up to two uh, storage components without any additional hardware. The other of course being the standard 2.5 inch SATA bay. Some of the options that came on these machines were fingerprint readers, the web camera was actually an option, and then the smart card reader was also optional on these devices. All of this is being driven by two batteries, either a 3-cell 32 watt hour or a 6-cell 44 watt hour. And the 6-cell is the one that's on the bottom of the machine, and that 3-cell is actually a battery bay that can be installed in the Ultra Bay slot. Let's go ahead and do a tour of some of the ports. On the left-hand side of the machine, we do have where we're going to access our hard disk drive, and then we also have a card reader, a headphone microphone combo jack, and USB 2.0. It is worth pointing out that this card reader is actually an express card slot, which can be used uh, to upgrade all uh, sorts of things, including adding uh, additional USB slots, uh, eGPUs, uh, or even additional storage if you have the right components. So 
that's kind of a, a nice little convenient thing to have. Along the back, we have power, our ethernet port, USB 3.0, USB 2.0 always on. We have display port, and then of course we have VGA. And then along the right-hand side of the machine, we have the physical Wi-Fi kill switch, the Kensington lock slot, and then the Ultra Bay Slim. And this Ultra Bay Slim can take a DVD, a DVD-RW, a battery, or an additional hard disk drive. So theoretically, if you, you know, bought all of the aftermarket components for this, you could potentially run up to four drives in this machine. Why you would want to do that? No idea, but the option remains. And to remove the uh, Ultra Bay, and we may as well do so to start our disassembly, all we need to do is move the catch from the lock to the unlock, press this over, and we've gone ahead and ejected our DVD multi-recorder. So to continue our disassembly, we will need a couple of tools, primarily a screwdriver. So the next thing that we will do is spin out the screw for the hard disk drive bay. And that just kind of flings out. Now this one doesn't have a caddy, uh, so I've just got the drive uh, friction fitting in there and I am running an SSD. We can remove the battery like so. This is a uh, 66 plus. You'll also see these with 81 plus written on there. The next thing that we'll do is uh, spin out these two screws to access our round. And a few other bits and bobs. So this is where your 3G uh, card would go. You can also drop an M uh, SATA SSD in here. Just make sure that your antennas are still nicely taped up like you see there. We do have two RAM slots facing us uh, here. One of them is not occupied, and then we have got four gigs in the other. And then we have our Wi-Fi card uh, staring us right in the face here. If we were using a 3G uh, modem, if you will, and had a SIM card, it would go in this area right here, and you can see the pictograms uh, for it staring us right there. And then the next thing that we're going to go ahead and remove, of course, is the keyboard. And all of the keyboard screws, as per usual, are marked. And we have one here uh, underneath the RAM cover. And then there's a pictogram right here that denotes that this uh, screw also needs to be removed to release the keyboard. So if we undo the latch, flip this over, and we can see that our keyboard wiggle uh, reveals that this is ready to be removed. We'll just wiggle this up to the top and gently uh, coerce this out of place, like so. And if we move the keyboard forward, we can disconnect the ribbon cable here. We have our CMOS battery uh, staring us in the face here, and then the uh, remaining uh, components to do the disassembly would involve removing the entire palm rest, which uh, there isn't really a whole lot of components uh, sitting under there that we need to worry about. I suspect our Bluetooth uh, daughter board is sitting under there, and then a whole lot of plastic uh, to make room for all of the other uh, optional components. So as you can see, this machine is very easy to service. Um, all of the major components that you would want to upgrade or need to replace or repair are easily accessible. We do have a couple of shields here just protecting uh, some of the key components from any liquid damage uh, that may uh, get into the board. Uh, but the key, the whole system does have drainage holes on the keyboard, uh, which is fantastic, which means that any spill that happens on the keyboard deck will literally just drain out the bottom of the machine. So your keyboard might be sticky, um, but the internal guts of your machine are gonna be a-okay. I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble this whole thing and then we'll do some boot tests and we'll talk about the practical applications of a machine like this. All right, with everything back together, let's go ahead and open this up and turn it on. So obviously we are not booting into uh, Windows, and that is because this thing is just, uh, it's just so darn impressive. We are in Linux Mint, and this thing is, as you can see, booting quite quickly into the operating system. 
And if I were running a machine of this era, even, an, even the next generation up, the T430, I would be very tempted to use a Linux install. Like this is running on four gigs of RAM, not 16. And I'm pretty sure we're dealing with just a basic i5 CPU in here. Yeah, the 20, the 2520M. Uh, and it's great. Like this is uh, a very basic computer, but it's gonna access the internet. It's gonna do all sorts of document work. It's going to uh, allow me to watch YouTube. This thing is probably going to cost anywhere in the world about $50 or less. And if you need a computer, like you are buying a lot of durability here. And if you're uh, willing to run Linux, this is pretty much a great way uh, to either start learning the Linux operating system or just to have the ultimate budget computer that'll do everything that a brand new one that you might buy in a big box store can do in terms of basic computer functionality. Obviously, you're not playing the latest and greatest games with it, but that doesn't mean that there's still not a lot of computer here that people can use. I'm also happy to report that even with the smaller battery that the S series is known for, I'm going to get about 2 hours and 20 minutes connected to Wi-Fi uh, with this machine, which again, is not going to beat any records, but if you need a computer to use around the house or small business tasks, and again, you can work in the Linux environment, uh, these things are fantastic, fantastic value. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at a laptop that you can service for literally under $50. A whole lot of build quality, good design decisions, ThinkPad reliability. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any stories about your T420S, I would love to hear them in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed this sort of content, I'll leave some videos up on the screen for you to check out and some uh, instructions on the bottom right hand corner here on how you can support the channel. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.